Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be talking about the difference between business rule and JavaScript client APIs. So we'll start with discussing as to what business rules are, when to use them. Similarly, what are JavaScript client APIs, when to use them. And at the end, I'm going to give a brief demo about these terms and show the differences. As for me, I'm Yuri Sharora. You can reach me at urishrora.com. So let's get started. We'll start with the business rule. Um, it's, a, it's a piece of functionality that allows system administrators or customizers a quick and easy way to incorporate some basic business logic and form manipulation into their organization without having to know JavaScript. So what are the key facts that uh, we need to know about business rules? Uh, using the GUI, the administrators, that is system administrators or system customizers, can create simple if and then type of logic to set forms, field values, make fields required, hide and show fields, etc. Any logic you define here can be applied to standard forms and the new quick create forms in the both web client as well as the new tablet client. The business rule is translated into JavaScript internally by the CRM, we can call it CRM engine, engine and apply to the form. The scope of the business can be either entity or all forms. The business rule fires whenever that entity is created or saved, either from the form inside the CRM or from any web application. So I just mentioned uh, um, one or two key use cases earlier, but this screen lists all the scenarios that we can, with the help of com combining the conditions and actions that we can achieve through business rules. So for example, setting up, setting the field values, clearing the field values, set the field requirement levels, show or hide fields, enable or disable fields, validate data and show error messages and creating business recommendation based on business intelligence. So we've gone through the key facts and the key use cases. Let's try to understand what are the limitations of business rules. So business rules are not executed during bulk edits or reports. We, ca we can't debug or trace business rules like we can do with the JavaScript. The actions that can be performed using business rules are also limited. Business rules are launched in the order they are activated. When a JavaScript and business rule act on the same field of a form, the precedence is for the system JavaScript followed by the custom JavaScript and then the business rule. A JavaScript cannot be called from a business rule business rule can't interact with tabs and sections. And there's another limitation which I have, I have not listed here is that the number of if and then or if and else statements in a business rule is limited to 10. Now there are a set of uh, go charts that we need to be aware of when using business rule implementations. For example, the JavaScript interference. Before designing a business rule for a particular entity, Make sure to check if any existing JavaScript on the form will interfere with your business rules. JavaScript may accidentally trigger your business rules prematurely or cause other unexpected behavior. If JavaScript already exists on the form, it may make sense to combine to continue to leverage JavaScript instead of business rules to manage behavior on the entity form. This can avoid any conflicts uh, from the get-go but it may also be easier to support going forward since all the behavior is managed in one place. However, just remember to take into account the expectations of form behavior for users on mobile devices. The other gotcha could be that we need to ensure that all the fields on the form, uh, on the entity forms are available. If you, if you are uh, encountering issues, uh, for example, with business rules, uh, um, it's possible that uh, you know we go and check if the fields are there on the form 
this may happen in a scenario where you are hiding a supporting field that shouldn't uh, necessarily be displayed to the user for example the other gotcha is around the on chain behavior uh, you would notice that the on chain behavior is not triggering for example so uh, do not use business rules to trigger an on change event this is by microsoft design so the system does not accidentally get uh, lost in an infinite loop there are a uh, couple of uh, frequently asked questions also uh, but we'll we'll discuss them uh, um, as we go at the end close to the uh, demo session now let's discuss about the javascript client api client side scripting using javascript one of the ways to apply custom business process logic for displaying data on a form in dynamic 365 customer engagement now i'm not sure if any one of you have seen my earlier video on youtube uh, titled form event programming using javascript in dynamic 365 and overview um, that one covers the detailing around the different terms, syntaxing, and how do you do the form event programming in JavaScript. So I recommend, strongly recommend you go through and get a base understanding around this topic. But as for the API side of things, uh, which is what we are covering in this video, um, there are significant changes made to the client side APIs in Dynamics 365 version 9.x. Um, with uh, the key ones listed here, um, with the starting with the execution context. So, what is an execution context? It defines an even. Uh, it defines as even context in which the code executes. Using execution context, we can retrieve form or git context instead of exam dot page, which is uh, deprecated. Um, similarly, we have form context. Now, the client API form context provides a reference to the form or an event on the form such as a quick view control or a row in an editable grid against which the current code is, is getting executed. The grid context presents the data in a tabular format. Grids can span the entire form or can be one of the items in the form. The later is called subgrids. The global context, uh, a new API added to the xrm.utility object to retrieve information specific to organization, user, and client. It is equivalent to xrm.page.context, which has been deprecated. So if you just quickly discuss as to what are the new client APIs and deprecated APIs are, the new client APIs are xrm.device, xrm.encoding, xrm.navigation, and xrm.web API. The xrm.web API is, is pretty popular. Uh, these days some duplicated APIs I've listed here which I've just briefly mentioned earlier the xrm.page xrm.page.context um, and then there's this diagram here showing the list as well now for the execution context uh, we can talk about a little more around how we pass it as a parameter so you can do that through a UI as shown on the screen there is a checkbox I marked in the red uh, uh, box uh, which says passing the execution context as a parameter and then in the code we get that parameter um, and then we can use that execution context uh, let's say on all load it automatically passes the first parameter to the function this uh, snippet shows an example of uh, getting the execution context as a parameter now <clears throat> we want to also understand the overall sequencing of events between business rules and javascript to better understand the differences i guess um, so business rules and javascript take different dif places in the sequencing of event handlers depending on which event you are concerned about the business rules execute during the on load event of the form and during the on change events of fields that are selected in their conditions list when the on load event is triggered, business rules are evaluated first, followed by the registered JavaScript methods. However, when a field's on change event is triggered, business rules are evaluated last after all the JavaScript methods have returned. JavaScript could be designed to alter fields that are specified in a business rule. 
so the business rule may not be applicable and on the right hand side I've just uh, drawn a small uh, pictorial view of the sequencing uh, for your reference so yeah this, this really covers the key uh, differences if you may call it and, and also the understanding behind the business rules in JavaScript I'm just going to give a very brief demo as to where these uh, uh, components appear and how we, and, and then you know I'll leave that to you guys to expand on uh, as per your requirements of a project okay so let's switch over to the demo and I'm just going to go to the uh, default uh, solution just will probably take uh, contact as an example and on the left hand side you can see there's um, uh, you have forms and, and there's, the, there's a place called business uh, rules so if you click on the business rule uh, you get something like screen like something like this here where you have a set of conditions and right side you have a set of uh, actions the combination of two would form the actual business rule based on your requirement so that's the area where you would, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there's, there's something called scoping. You can define the scope here. Once you're done, you can validate and save it. And uh, similarly, uh, for the JavaScript side of things, you will open the form in the design mode, um, go to the form properties, and you can add the JavaScript library that you have worked on it. You can add them here. And then uh, based on the different events you want to add them, you can select them and uh, this is the place where I was saying you can pass the execution context as a parameter which is what I showed earlier in the demo um, so yeah this is these are the two key areas uh, I just mentioned it through a small demo one is the business rules area that you would go and put conditions and this is the other place where you would use the JavaScript uh, uh, based approach if you have to so uh, that's all from me for a brief demo and uh, as for the conclusion um, what we have gone through we have, we have understood what a business rule is what are the limitations of business rules um, what is uh, uh, javascript and apis are what are the new ones and duplicated ones we have also understood the execution context um, how we can path that as a parameter and most importantly we have gone through understanding the sequencing of different events between business rules and, and JavaScript. Uh, I hope uh, this video was uh, of uh, great help to you. Again, thanks a lot. Bye for now.